Welcome into the Illini Enquirer podcast. And today on the pod, we're going to talk some Illini football recruiting because campuses are now open. I keep calling it the great recruiting reopening because after almost 15 months without kids being able to see campus, we're going to see a big rush as June 1st uh, is on Tuesday is the first day uh, campuses and then these programs can host recruits, see them in person. For a lot of these guys, it's going to be the first time they've locked eyes on college coaches in person. And we'll break down what Brett Bielma and the Illini are going to do. And Ryan Easterling, Illini Enquirer football recruiting analyst, uh, is with us today. And, and Ryan, it's just finally like this in recruiting. Like we're starting to get, whether it's me going to a White Sox game the other day or you know certain things where you can go to a bar nowadays and if you're vaccinating, be unmasked, all that stuff. It's starting to get back to normal. Well, recruiting, I don't know if this is going to be a normal month, uh, but it's going to be back to being crazy again. It's going to be back to in-person contact, which which you absolutely have to have uh, in recruiting. So what are your thoughts about June, everything, the floodgates opening? The, the dead period's dead. Um, you know, I, I think what you're going to see is usually you've got this normal recruiting cycle and obviously there's still been recruiting going on in, in different ways, but everything is really going to get compressed. So when you normally have the opportunity to have guys on campus in the spring and sure there were some guys who took self-guided tours and everything, the, the organized on-campus recruiting efforts where the players and the, and the prospects can interact with the coaches is now happening. Uh, you know, that was something they didn't get a chance to do during the spring. And now they have this opportunity, but the, the signing periods haven't moved. Those are still when they are, they're still, you know, December and February. So you're taking what's normally a, a longer recruiting cycle and really cramming it in now. And just, that's why you see a lot of these guys uh, who are taking multiple official visits in June to try and get onto these campuses. And for a lot of them, see the campuses of these schools that are recruiting them for the first time. So first impressions, I think, in this cycle are going to be huge. Uh, you know, you really want to blow guys away. You really want to put on your best. And I think a lot of these schools have had this long time off where they can prepare for this situation and be ready to go. Yeah. And I kind of want to almost compare what a normal recruiting cycle is compared to this cycle. Cause it is so different, Ryan, like you mentioned to it. Um, the signing period for football, the early signing period is six months away. And these guys haven't been on campuses yet. And, and not only that, like they haven't been on campus the last couple of months, they haven't been on campus. Some of these guys, maybe they took a visit March of 2020. Like that was the last time you're able to get on campus. So I remember guys like Valen Erickson or you know guys like that were able to sneak in visits before then. But like these guys usually as high school juniors, they go down on official trips, right? They see some college campuses if they're starting to get recruited. Maybe in the spring and summer, they take some unofficials. But usually summer is a lot of unofficial visits, right? Like, And then fall, you get your list down, you take all your official visits, and then maybe in the winter as well, uh, if you want to kind of, you know, that last push before kids really commit and sign. That's usually how it goes. But there's going to be a huge rush of official visits in June. Like, this is rare. Usually Illinois only has a couple official visitors in the summer. They're going to have 30 to 35 in the next month. They get 56 official visits per class. They're going to spend a big allotment of those now. And it's because everyone else is going to do it. Everyone's been you know, cramped up at home, Ryan. And like they all want to get out now. They all want to take their trips. And I think a lot of these guys – really want to you know take it far in recruiting and maybe commit before their senior seasons so they're going to take all their official visits now but this is because of the pandemic because they haven't been able to visit for 15 months it is different than other recruiting cycles where most of these would have been unofficials yeah i mean what's going to really make it interesting to me too is i mean you've got this weird mix of guys that some of some have already committed some are planning summer commitments before their senior seasons but you're also getting a situation where a lot of these guys thrive on going to camps and getting noticed at camps. So you've got this wave of official visits that happening in June, almost concurrently with a lot of these camps. Um, and uh, Illinois is kind of an inter interesting position this year compared to where they've been in previous years. Cause in the past, they haven't had this number of commits by June. So this is a, a different sort of scenario than they found themselves in as far as how many scholarships do they want to spend early? Do they want to push and try and get as many guys done early as they can? It seems like they're kind of going that route. And especially with some of the key targets they have coming up visiting in the month of June, I think they've already zoned in on who they really want to get. And then there's maybe a few spots open at the end to fill in. But 
you know, it, it changes the, the dynamic a little bit from what we've seen in years past as far as how they approach this cycle. And, you know, I, I think if anything, schools uh, just in general have had to be very nimble with how they navigate the, all the different circumstances and, and the, the various twists and turns that this whole recruiting cycle has taken. But it seems like it's finally getting back to at least some sort of familiarity that we've seen in years past, at least as far as how the cycle plays out. Yeah, there's going to be three camps for Illinois. They got two showcase camps, the 16th and the 23rd, then a big man camp, the 27th. And, you know, they're, they're putting a lot of their officials early. And I think they're really smart to do that, Ryan, because they scheduled these official visits early. They just banked. They like, said, OK, we're going to take the chance that the dead period is going to be done June 1st. Let's start scheduling these guys in like March and February. And they have a great list of July 4, June 4th through 6th visitors this weekend. Uh, they have a great list. All eight of their commitments are coming. And then seven top priority targets, including a bunch of instators that we'll get into. Uh, but th they are going with the early push. And I think for them, that makes a lot of sense, Ryan. You have this momentum. You have this new car smell, or I guess new coach smell, I guess we could call it. I don't know what Brett Bielema wears. Hopefully that smell too bad. Yeah, I don't know what Brett Bielema wears fragrance-wise. Uh, growing up on the farm, not sure if that was his big thing. Old, old uh, Spice? <laughs> that's probably right. But uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, you got that buzz, right? That you have this new staff and you can sell that. And I think they also have some momentum in recruiting. Not that their class is full of these four and five stars, like say Rutgers right now, but they do have recruits helping them recruit. And, and with the in-state kids and even Donovan Leary and Joey Oakle have been very outgoing. Those guys being on campus to help sell, I think that can be qualified as a little bit of momentum. And they see, Hey, eight guys are here. Unlike previous years, like you were talking about, Ryan, where it's like they only got one or two commits. Like, wh where are they going? Like, who's going to be with me here? They have guys that are pretty, you know, enjoyable guys to talk to that are on board. So th I think them doing it early as opposed to like Iowa. Iowa's waiting till the end of the month uh, to possibly to host most of their big official visitors. And I think they're trying to be the last one, the last impression before another dead period. And it's Iowa. They're strong. You know, the kids want to visit them anyway, so maybe that helps them. But what do you think about Illinois kind of front-loading uh, this official visitor schedule? I think it, in some ways it's a little bit of a gamble because if you don't come out of it with results, then you're giving other schools opportunities to get them on campus and potentially win them over. I mean, it, we've seen it in the past. A lot of times that last visit's the one that sticks in everybody's mind but they're trying to strike while the iron's hot. You know, they've got, like you said, a lot of momentum. They've had a lot of buzz going into this. They've built a pretty good base already. And especially that first weekend, if they have all those guys there, I hate to call it peer pressure, but I think guys will be more inclined to maybe take that leap. You might see one or two commits that weekend, potentially. I don't know if, how hard they're going to push, but I think they'll push harder than some of the previous staffs have to try and close some of those down before those guys get to other campuses. And I, I think they're going to have to do that. For this to really be successful, I think you're going to see maybe not a PJ Fleck type push where they're putting them on the clock, but I think you're going to see a push where they say, hey, we don't want you to go to any other campuses. These are the guys that you're going to be playing with. These are the guys, and this is the place we want you to be. So I, I think they're going to have to push at least a little bit to get some of that closed down. Otherwise, guys are going to go to other schools, experience other schools, and, you know, you might see a couple get away if, if that's the case. So, you know, I, it changes things a little bit. Um, you know, I don't think it's the end-all, be-all. You know, they, they could leave a good enough impression that once some of these guys visit other campuses that they find themselves coming back to Illinois, and I would not. I mean, you know, I, I have zero doubt that the guys that are committed are going to continue to push them and say, hey, you don't need to go there or just remember what it was like here yep. at Illinois. So, but, you know, I think getting them on campus early and maintaining that buzz helps. I just think you have to come out with at least some momentum and some results from that first weekend for it to really be a success. Yeah, and I think, you know, most of these guys have several official visits scheduled. And 
to be honest with you, I know Illinois fans will want to come out of this weekend with three or four. And I think, I think that's really un, probably unrealistic because if you're a prospect, you probably should go and then see multiple campuses since you really haven't seen them. Uh, I think it's a good sign. Um, you know, I've had a couple of the prospects, Jordan Anderson told me this Malachi hood, who's his teammate at JCA. Uh, he's camping for Illinois on, on Tuesday. Uh, Ian Pugh, the three-star wide out out of, Ian, uh, out of Fenwick, who you've seen play and Jared Beatty out of Oswego East. You saw him play Orion this weekend. Those guys are taking an unofficial on Tuesday and then an official over the weekend. That sets up pretty well. Like th- those would two guys be two guys I'd have my eye on. Not, not that I don't think Illinois is battling because they're battling Big Ten programs. These are real power five recruitments. Um, but like Aiden Lawfrey uh, from Gibson City is, is visiting this weekend. That's a kid that I think has wanted to take his visit. So if you aren't able to lock him up, I don't think it's done. I don't think, oh, they missed it. It didn't work out. What a failure of a weekend. I think for some of these kids, you want them to measure up something too. It's just you hope your pitch, you know, the the way you've recruited them, which in-state kids, I don't think Illinois is recruiting, uh, you know, no one's recruiting these guys harder than, than Illinois at this point. So it's a huge weekend, I think, especially for those, those in-state kids because those are kids you hope you can lock up. You hope some of those – fellow in-state commits uh, can help them sway. Uh, but this this might take a couple weeks would be my thing. I, I think some of these guys want to take multiple visits. To be honest with you, if I were one of their parents or I was one of their coaches or I was one of those prospects, I'd probably want to visit a couple places too to make sure. Yeah, and I think one thing they can do too with some of the guys that are taking the unofficial visit ahead of the official visit is while they're there, you can kind of take their temperature and see – you know, are they, do they feel like they're really hooked on, got the fish on the hook um, to where when the weekend comes around, they can, they can, you know, try and reel them in and potentially land them. Um, You know, and I think that gives you an idea of how hard you really need to push over the weekend. But yeah, I'm kind of with you. I mean, for a lot of these guys, and, and I think it's the right move for some of them is if you really haven't had a chance to do your due diligence and do your research on a lot of these schools, especially in person, because you can get all the mail in the world and you can do all the research online in the world as, as you want. But until you really go there and experience it for yourself, I don't know that you really have a great feel for all these different campuses. And, you know, I don't think anybody would blame any of these guys for wanting to see multiple schools to have, uh, you know, points of comparison. So I don't, I don't think anybody would fault them for that. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, it's whether, whether it got jumps. It's a, yeah, it's Illinois' job to make him say, hey, this is the place to be. Jump on board now. And that that's the most delicate balance in the world, right? Because we, we can talk about, you know, PJ Fleck has the reputation, how much how fair it is. I think a little bit of it's fair. Is you know, he's he's like, Hey, this is your spot, otherwise I gotta go to somebody else. Right. Mm-hmm. Everybody does that. Every coach does that in recruiting. Um, but some do it harder than others. Like Lovey was just like, eh, it, if you don't want on board now. You know, we'll look elsewhere, but I'm not going to pressure you in anything, right? Like there's, there's got to be a little bit back and forth, but you also don't want to push away some of your top priority guys, right? Like saying like, Oh, if, if, if you don't commit now, like we're not, we're, we're going to go after somebody else. Like that's, that's a very delicate balance uh, that they have to kind of go with there. The other, the other kid I want to mention here, because I think these in-state prospects are going to be really interesting in the next couple uh, months, because these are all top 20 in-state prospects, right? Like these are the kind of guys that we think Illinois needs to land more because Henry Boyer, Hank Beatty, Clayton Leonard, and Jordan Anderson really didn't have much other power five interest, right? So to get some power five wins in state would be big. And, and Ryan, that's the biggest thing about this weekend. I, I think we've learned the staff evaluates and when they offer somebody, they go full bore. There's no messing around and they go and lock these kids up. I think Jordan Anderson uh, is a perfect example of that. Clayton Leonard, they offered quickly, didn't care. No one else offered. They, they just wanted to close that recruitment really quick. Um, now it's about how can this staff at, at, at a lower big 10 program, how can their efforts, can it win power five battles against Nebraska, Minnesota, Iowa, you know, your, your big 10 competitors. I think that's going to be really interesting to see over the next month. Yeah. And I think one other thing too, especially as they're trying to mend fences with the state of Illinois is you really can't mess around with the guys in Illinois because you're trying to rebuild those relationships. You're trying to restore that trust that all the in-state head coaches have in you. And obviously they've, they've gotten off to a great start. Um, but you can't, you can't jerk those guys around. Um, you know, you, you can't play games with them. I, I think they've been very frank and upfront with a lot of the in-state recruits. I think they've, they've shown 
a high level of commitment to recruiting the in-state players that, that's needed. And I think it's what they needed to do this entire cycle. Um, and yeah, I, I think you, you have some latitude to push a little bit, but you don't want to push a guy so hard that you end up burning that bridge. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you, if he feels like you're pushing him too hard to where you don't have his best interest at heart, then I think that could be a bit of a turnoff for some of these recruits. Um, but at the same time, if you do it in a way that conveys, hey, we're extremely interested in you and we think you are going to be most successful here, I think that's a way that it could be successful as far as a pitch or a sell, um, you know, that could potentially convince a guy to jump on board. But, you know, for some of the guys, if it's, if it's clear, and I, I expect these coaches have done their research ahead of time as well to know who might be more inclined to, to make a leap now, um, you know, a guy like Jared Beatty, Illinois was his first official visit that he scheduled and it was a little while before anybody else did. So, you know, I think he's always been a guy that's been very interested in Illinois and, you know, compare that to, you mentioned Aiden Lawfrey. He's a guy who's got a lot of options as well. Um, but it's a guy who has always maintained that he wants to see other schools. So, you know, I think you can approach different guys, different ways. And I, I fully expect these coaches to have reached out to family members and high school coaches to kind of take temperature on these guys before they head into these visits to know which buttons they can push and which ones they shouldn't. Beatty would be big just because you can get a defender, right? Like there's no defensive yeah. guys yet in, in this class, which is really, really interesting, but he's also just a, a great fit. Uh, edge rusher, six foot five. Mm -hmm. He's, he's probably going to be 225, 245 when he, you know, by the time he, he's playing here, but he's about 215 right now. Really good athlete. Uh, Ryan, you've seen him like that. That's just a kid that a lot of times you've seen those kind of edge rushers from the state go to schools like Wisconsin or Iowa. And um, that'd be a, that'd be a nice get in state. I, I feel the same way with Ian Pugh, who's currently a Cincinnati commit. Iowa's in the mix there. Some people thought Iowa and Cincinnati were kind of battling it out there. Uh, but Ian's been in contact with Jacob Bostic and Jared Beatty, and, and he's coming to, uh, for an unofficial on Tuesday and then an official. So I, I don't know. I'm starting to feel like they might stand better there. And you know, I, I did a story on Jacob Bostic last week with, with him and his dad. And, you know, they love the way Illinois is recruiting them. Like it, it, it reminds me a lot of Jordan Anderson, man. Like they offered and then they have gone full bore. And I think it's really impressed him. I, I think the only thing, thing that he needs to be sold on, I think, is more style of play with Tony Peterson, his offense, what Brett Bielma is going to do, just because they're more of a running, big, physical offense. Uh, and then Lawfrey, I think he's always been a kid. I feel like he's grown up in the backyard of Illinois. I think everyone wants him to go to Illinois, expects him to, but I think he wants to make sure, like, hey, is that what I want? Um, so I think he's going to check out some of these places in Iowa, Washington State, but Illinois has recruited him really well, and I think the staff has really resonated. So I, I just think these guys – would be so big. And I think it would be Joey Wagner wrote a piece this weekend. I think it would be a statement and, and I, I'm not using it as a pun with state, but I, I think that would be a statement if you can land a couple of these guys this month. Oh yeah. And I mean, it continues that momentum that you, you got to build upon, you know, it's, it's one thing to build all this momentum up to this point and have these good vibes that are surrounding the program right now on the recruiting front, but it's pretty easy for it to stall out if you if you have this big weekend and then nothing really comes of it. So for them to at least be able to keep the ball rolling a little bit, and they've shown the ability that when things start to slow down, that they can put their foot on the gas pedal and make some things happen. So, you know, especially, and I keep coming back to this, especially with the in-state guys, with them bringing all these guys in-state that have already committed to the program in, I think they're trying to build this camaraderie around that. And I think that is what's really going to help support their efforts, you know, it, it's a collective effort between both the coaches and the players because good players want to play with other good players. And I, th I think the same can be true with all these guys that have played on seven on seven teams together. They play against each other in high school. They know each other well. So, you know, as well as these coaches know them and know their parents, the players know each other just as well too. And so that I think also gives you another piece of ammo or another weapon in the recruiting game to be able to really convince some of these guys to, to jump on board, to, to join the cause and to keep this ball rolling in the way they've got it going already. I know we focused on it so much, but this is why we do is in state recruiting because these guys do know each other. And I think it's just easier to go someplace when you know people there, 
right? I, I, I just think that's easy. Look at the Trinity Catholic kids. I think it was easier for Shaman to come here because Isaiah was coming here. I think it was easier for Reggie Love to come here because, you know, those other guys were coming here. So um, I, I, that's why it's important because it, it can build on each other and you're never going to own the state, but I think you can do really well. I mean, look what Northwestern's doing right now. They got three of the top nine guys in the state. And I think those guys knowing each other, outside of Northwestern's success under uh, Fitz uh, has really helped them there. All right, let's take a quick break. When we come back, let's talk about some of the guys out of state. I think some chances to, you know, hasn't been like a huge splash. They got some chances for some huge splash. Let's talk about that next. All right, we've been waiting on this visitor and Illinois hanging around in, in this recruitment, despite the competition. And speaking of, you know, kind of having ties to Illinois, Dallin Hayden is the younger brother of Chase Hayden, who Chase and his family obviously trust Brett Bielma a lot. Chase uh, committed and played for Brett Bielma uh, for a year at Arkansas. Then he transfers to ECU last year, barely played there, had an injury, uh, but then he transfers back to, to Bielma here now at Illinois. And Dallin's been on campus already a couple of times to see his brother and he's coming back this weekend for an official visit um i, I illinois has got a chance like are they the front runner probably not because he's notre dame and ohio state got official visits but ryan it's one of those recruitments there it's like ohio state and notre dame probably have a couple running backs right that they are in the mix for so it feels like one of those that if illinois just hangs around long enough and maybe ohio state or notre dame go you know prioritize this guy or prioritize that four-star prospect Maybe they have a chance here, but there's certainly a trust here. Tennessee's in the mix. Uh, our buddies, uh, Alex Golush and Dre Brown down there with the Vowels. Uh, he's the Mr. Tennessee football. Uh, he's from Memphis. So uh, it's a very competitive recruitment. I I'm not going to sit there and say they're a leader, but they're hanging around here. And, and I think in, in a recruitment like this where it's a guy, is Ohio State and Notre Dame going to prioritize him as the number one back? If not, you might have a bigger chance. I look at it this way, you know, a few months ago, you weren't even in the picture and, you know, Bielema comes in, they end up bringing in Chase and suddenly he, they, they crack into the top four, top five for him. You know, you're in a better position now than you've, than you were before you're in the picture, you're getting a visit. That's that I think alone is a win. Um, but like you said, there's, there's a level of trust there. I mean, Bielema and his staff, recruited and built that relationship with the whole Hayden family. I mean, Aaron Hayden is a Tennessee alum. He played at Tennessee. So there's a, you know, there's a big tie there, but, you know, I, I think he said in the past that he's not going to, you know, force his son to go there. It's wherever, wherever Dallin decides he wants to go, he'll go, but there are some heavy hitters in this recruitment. And I, I think kind of like you said, it's, if you just stay around and hang around in there, then you, you've got a shot. You could see how things, some of the other dominoes fall for schools like Notre Dame or for Ohio State. And if at the end of the day, it feels like maybe he just ends up falling in your lap and the right, the right, the stars align and you get yourself a feature back. And I think that's one thing that Illinois can sell um, that maybe some of the others, especially like in Ohio State or in Notre Dame that have so much talent on the roster. And, you know, this is no slight to any of the, the backs that are coming into Illinois or a guy, you know, Jordan Anderson, I, I think the world of him too, as a player, he's, he's awesome. But a guy like Dallin Hayden is, is like your feature bell cow, be like my Monty ball, any of those great Wisconsin backs, you know, John Taylor, all those guys be like those backs and you'll get the rock. We'll feed you the rock and you'll be great in this offense. And that's, that's, I think the sell. And if, if it just happens to work out great. And yep. if it doesn't, I don't think you feel any shame about losing him to a school like Tennessee where his dad's an alum or Ohio state. That's a national championship caliber team. Yeah. That, that's one of those where it's like, Hey, nice to be in this recruitment and see what you can make of it. Right. And, and you certainly have the personal connection there. And I agree with you on the playing time. cell cause chase Brown could have two more years left. Uh, but Chase is gone after this year. Reggie Love certainly will be in that mix for running back, but Dallin could have immediate playing time in that rotation, right? So once he gets here, uh, if he decided to come to Illinois. All right, another one that you met with uh, down in Florida. You made the trip to Bradenton while you were down there. Sean Miller out of IMG Academy. Uh, he's visited West Virginia a couple of times, so I feel like the Mountaineers are doing well there. But Illinois... I think he's in a better place than, than most people would consider for a top 500 prospect. And, and talk about playing time. That, that's a position I long have said that they need to upgrade talent. They have through the roster and position changes with Isaiah Williams and Marquez Beeson moving to wide receiver. But Sean Miller, Ryan, what do you think about the Illini's chances there? 
Man, if there's a position where they need some guys moving forward, that's it. Um, you know, I, I got the vibe when I met with Miller that West Virginia probably has a slight edge. But again, you know, he's he hasn't had a chance to get to a lot of these campuses. I think the only one he really said he'd visited so far, he took a self-guided, I think, to West Virginia. And then I think he's also seen Arizona back when he was home. Um, but, you know, these other schools that are in his final group, you know, Michigan State and Illinois and Indiana, he hasn't had a chance to see those schools. So uh, right now he's got four official visits scheduled, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan State and West Virginia. And it's an opportunity for all these schools to, to make an impression on him. And so, you know, he's a smart kid. I think he's, he's very calculated. He'll do his due diligence. He'll do his research on these programs. And you know, he has a good relationship with the coaching staff at pretty much all the schools that have recruited him. Um, you know, I think West Virginia has been pretty, pretty involved there. I think, like I said, they probably have the slight edge right now, but the, these official visits are separation time. Like this is where you can really make up a lot of ground. This is where you can uh, build those relationships, especially in person. Um, you know, I, I really like the way he plays. He's really improved himself physically in the last two years. Um, he's kind of a do-it-all wide receiver, really good route runner, great athlete, you know, former baseball player. Um, and those guys make awesome wide receivers. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I, I think they have a chance there. Do I, do I think they're in the lead right now? No, but maybe they come out of that first weekend with, with some, you know, some ground made up and, and put themselves right there in the picture. And Sean told me when I met with him that he wants to make that decision sometime this summer, probably I would think in July. So I think after his visits wrap up, it's not going to take too long before he sits down, sorts through everything and, and comes to a decision. Yeah. Sean Miller also planning to visit Indiana, which what a great passing offense that is and uh, Michigan state as well. So a lot of big 10 schools involved in there. And as you said, Arizona native, not afraid to go away from home. I mean, he's all the way down in in Florida now and, and looking at a lot of big 10 schools and Arizona seems like they're in the mix uh, as well there. Patrick Kudis is a teammate of Dallin Hayden, a six foot five, 285 pound offensive tackle. Illinois wants one more offensive tackle and they're shooting high for, for Kudis. Uh, as well as Ryan Bear, who's blowing up, just got a Notre Dame offer. He's going to visit the 11th through the 13th. And then Matt Fries out of New Jersey, where they've done really well in, in New Jersey. So if they can land one of those guys, but uh, Kudis is one that yeah, I think you were smart to get ahead of the curve and, and get these official visits because he's also going to Arkansas, Louisville, Oregon, probably Tennessee as well for, for an unofficial um, really good player. And he'd be a heck of a get, but I think this is one of those guys who's going to, going to take his time and take his visits. Yeah. And I mean, obviously he's had a ton of attention from a bunch of pretty good schools. Virginia tech's been all over him. Tennessee has been all over him and he's going to have his choice wherever he wants to go. Um, You know, I'm sure they could try and make the package sell with he and Hayden, whether that happens, eh, might as well take your shot though. Right. And, you know, I think the big thing they can sell is they'll, if they have him on campus, uh, they won't have him on campus with all the other, well, I guess they will have him on with uh, some of the other offensive linemen. So Okla and White Knack and, and Leonard and all those guys. So, you know, again, sell that camaraderie, sell that, that, hey, you're the missing piece type of, uh, type of pitch to him and see how it goes. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think they're going to, get him to stop from taking his other visits. I think he's going to take them all and, you know, that's fine. But I think this is an opportunity again to make a big impression on him, possibly gain some favor with him. And then, you know, I, you got to keep, keep talking to him, keep recruiting him in between visits and make sure you stay present, stay, stay on his mind. And if at the end of the day, he and Hayden somehow come together, then that's a huge coup. But if not, I think the other two guys you'd mentioned too in 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 Bear and in Freeze, you know, they they've stacked these visits week after week after week. So you can kind of work through your progression. I mean, obviously I they got way ahead of the curve on Bear. They were one of his earlier power five offers, which was really now looking like an awesome evaluation. Um, but he to me seems like a the better fit physically for what they might try to do. Um, but obviously Kudis is a, a great player. You know, he's a two-way player at the high school level. He could probably go either way, but, uh, future is, is likely at, at on offense and, um, you know, whether, if they get either of those two guys and even, even freeze is a good player too, but if they get any of those guys, um, you know, I think they've rounded out a pretty good first offensive line class under Bielema. Uh, one more for you for this weekend, Cody Jones, Michigan commit. 
uh, a top, you know, four star prospect out of Memphis. And, and Corey Patterson and this staff have been working Memphis really, really hard. Uh, Cody is expected to visit Illinois this weekend, Michigan the week after, probably going to schedule a visit to Tennessee as well. Just getting him on campus to me, Ryan, is, is a pretty big win. You're, you're getting a kid that's committed to Michigan, no matter you know how you know upset Michigan has been about underachieving in, in their minds under Jim Harbaugh. Uh, that's a different level of program in the Big Ten, and to get him on campus because you've been recruiting him so hard and he's interested, uh, that that's that's a good sign. I, I don't know if they're going to get him, but that's just a good sign for their recruiting, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean he's a he's an awesome athlete. He's a top 350 kid, um, and he's been committed to Michigan. Let's see here since. When did February. he commit? February, yeah. So I mean, it's he's been committed for a while. So getting a getting a visit from a four star that's committed to a fellow Big Ten program is a statement. But you know, those are the types of guys that, especially when Bielema was at Arkansas, he seemed to pull in. Um, he would he would get a handful of those a year, like just real good, fast athletes, um, guys like that that maybe weren't the most logical. But Illinois has really been pushing in that Memphis, Tennessee area, or just entirely in the state of Tennessee, and you know. Corey Patterson's been busy down there and this feels like one where, Hey, you know, if you get him on campus, anything can happen. Um, you know, do I, do I think he'll decommit right away? No. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, you're, you're laying groundwork in a recruitment that, you know, could pay off down the road and maybe he's waiting to see how the rest, some of the rest of the class takes shape. And if some other guys hop on board, he might be more inclined. And I, I think that could happen with not just him, but a couple of other guys in this class where some of the higher tier guys are waiting to see, hey, is this class really building? Is it, is it becoming legitimate? And if, if other guys are buying in, they might be more inclined to buy in as well. I just want to mention the guys over the next couple of weeks that we've confirmed so far. They're going to host more than we have confirmed so far. But uh, next weekend, so June 11th through the 13th, Mizzou commitment. Isaac Thompson is long been scheduled to visit on that weekend. Four-star prospect out of uh, the same high school that produced Tony Adams. Tony Adams and Thompson's brother are really close. Uh, so Illinois, if they can make that an interesting battle, would be big because he Eli Drinkwitz is doing awesome in, in St. Louis. And then what he's put together in Missouri has been impressive. Also that weekend, Felix Hickson, uh, a big six foot three, two hundred eighty-five pound nose tackle out of Georgia. We mentioned Ryan Bear, then a cornerback Mansoor Delaney out of Maryland. Also has offers from Maryland, a couple other Big Ten schools. Virginia Tech uh, is involved there. And the weekend after, two Flor uh, a Florida DB, Elijah McCantos, uh, Louisiana three-star safety, Corey Lambert, Micah Riley Ducker, another tight end, but he's a top 400 prospect. So if they can add a third tight end with what they want to do with tight ends, I can see that, especially – with the potential of Henry Boyer, maybe eventually playing offensive tackle, though he'll start at tight end. And then Chaz Nimrod, all name team in the class of 2022 out of Arkansas. He's visiting on the 18th as well. Uh, Ryan, any, anything you want to point out there? Any of those guys that really interest you? Well, McCantos, I think is interesting because Illinois is his only visit scheduled right now, if I recall correctly. I, and so, you know, we'll see whether other schools end up hopping in and maybe it's just a matter of him not having set anything else up, but if that weekend comes around and Illinois is still his only visit, I would think that it's a high likelihood they could probably go in and close that one out because, you know, it, to me, with the rush that there's been on getting all these visits in with so many guys taking these visits, unless he's got a reason that he hasn't taken any other up to that point, like maybe a scheduling thing or he's got other commitments, you know, I, I would think that it'd be likely that they could potentially push and get that one closed down. And he's a, he's a, you know, he's got great size. He's a longer, longer body at six one. Um, he's got a really good offer list to go with it. So, you know, that's a guy that you could potentially have as your boundary corner, especially as you go towards a slightly more DB heavy uh, defensive, uh, uh, you know, scheme. So uh, he's a guy that you could, you could easily plug and play before too long, probably sell earlier playing time, especially just because they need more bodies. You know, they had a pretty good haul in 2021 with defensive backs, but you're going to need more as, as time goes on. You'll probably have, I, I would imagine after this year, just guys will give it a year and they'll probably see a couple more transfers out. It just happens. Um, but if you can add capable athletic bodies like that with an offer list like that, I, I think that's a win. Um, you know, Riley Ducker's interesting. He's a, he's a talented guy. He's a top 400 guy. And you've already got a couple of good tight ends committed, but that's a guy that you really don't want to tell no to. He's different, uh, and, right? Like Boy, Boyer's yeah. a blocker. 
I think Anderson's more wide receiver uh, at, at this point, though he's getting bigger. Uh, but Riley Ducker's kind of like a dude already. Yeah. Like he's he's more built like he's not as highly ranked. But he's more built like a Luke Ford. Right, and and that's what I think you 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 can see. And, and his visit really kind of came up after that spring game, right? Mm-hmm. So I mean, he saw what they did with with a guy like Luke Ford in that orange and blue spring game. And I would imagine that had to appeal to him at least enough to, to convince him to take a leap on a visit. So, you know, they got his fifth visit. He had other schools, other good schools already lined up. He's from Nebraska. I don't know the last time Illinois landed anybody from Nebraska, but they, they're getting him on campus and he's a talented player and you know, get in there, make your cell and see what happens. So, I mean, if, if he wants to join, you can find a way to use him. Yeah. I think this is a month you got to get some defenders. Uh, that's that's one of my big things. He won. Yeah, he at least won. so far in this class, and you have a lot of needs. I, I think especially at nose tackle, uh, you know, edge rusher, which which is why Beatty is very important. Uh, Hickson would be a big one uh, at nose tackle. I know they're in on a couple other guys who could visit. Kenneth Grant uh, out of Merrillville, Indiana, is huge. He's a monster guy, uh, but you kind of need somebody after Calvin Avery and Roderick Perry, and and you know Roderick's gone after this year, and. You know, Calvin could be, uh, but more likely he's got two years of eligibility left. So uh, you need somebody uh, after that. And I think that's a big need defensive back. I, they did add a lot last year, but they still need more. And I think Lambert, they're in a great position with, they just scheduled that visit after offering. Uh, and then Mansour Delaney, I, I don't, I think you got a lot of competition there, uh, but you can tell six one one eighty is kind of their style at cornerback and, and he fits that mold. So um, yeah, I think this is a month, Ryan, where you already got eight, which is way different for Illinois. You, you've addressed some big needs, but if you can come out of this month with about a handful more, you're setting yourself up really well for the fall. Well, you still have 20 to 25 official visits, uh, kind of have more of a season. Maybe you can sell to some guys and you can continue recruiting these guys who maybe didn't commit. Maybe they're going into August or September and they still want to go. But if, if you can get close to, you know, a handful of commitments in, in this month, I think that'd be an amazingly successful month. Yeah. And, and I touched on this earlier, but keeping that momentum going is important. You know, you don't have to wrap your entire class up this summer. If you can, great, sure. But I anticipate, especially to this fall, you know, with with Illinois high school football being kind of an odd spring season, you know, as as far as I know right now, the plan is still to have the standard fall season coming up here in the in this fall. So I would anticipate there's going to be some guys who emerge in the fall and and really have you know whether it's at camps this summer or just you know show up and and start really playing well in the fall they'll probably have a few spots that they'll have open towards the end of the class that they'll have some flexibility with but I think if you can come out of the summer and come out of this official visit cycle with between maybe 12 to 14 or 12 to 15 commits or maybe even a few more you know I I would anticipate this is going to be a fairly big class I think they're going to have what somewhere in the mid-20s as far as open scholarships after this yeah but you always got to remember how many transfers you're taking because those guys count against that as well so I always say I don't know the exact number. I don't think they know the exact number of what it'll be. And it depends on some attrition as it go on. But I would say I would put your height around 20 it, prep prospects is mm-hmm. kind of what you'd look at, like 18 to 22 or whatever it is. Um, so they're already got a huge chunk of that, right? Um, so if you can get another chunk of that and have that all set before the fall camp starts, uh, I think you'd be in a, a really, really good spot. And you mentioned camps. Um, you know, this is a time where you're probably going to see several more offers. Is there going to go to some mega camps? They're going to have their showcase camps, which I don't know. Usually there's a couple of division one prospects on campus for those, uh, but maybe they find some guys that they just haven't been able to see in person because they haven't been able to be, uh, you know, those spring visits where they go to all these high schools, get to see these guys work out. A lot of these guys, they just want to see what do they look like in person? How do they move? How big are they? Uh, so they'll get that opportunity this summer. And that usually, turns into a couple offers, which usually turns into uh, down the line, a couple commitments too. Yeah. And, and I would expect, you know, compared to, compared to Lovey's staff, I would also probably expect that they're going to ma- maybe have a slightly higher level of talent on campus this summer because they're just not trying to over scout. You know, I, I think the last staff had a tendency of, of overthinking some of their scouts and they hit on a few guys, but they definitely missed on a few spots as well. Just trying to trying too hard to find, uh, you know, diamonds in the rough. So um, yeah, I, I think they're, they're, the baseline for talent is going to be pretty good at some of these camps. I mean, obviously you get a mixed bag at a lot of them, but. I, I just um, put a comment on that because I think you're saying like the last staff at times, they could also be really picky. 
right? Like mm-hmm. and they had their stand. Too picky. Yeah. And, 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 but it was sometimes like a running back who runs a four, six, you're not going to offer, uh, but he fits every other trait and he's a good player that you can get. Right. Like those are some of the things that, yeah, I think the last half of times would get too picky. And by the end of the class, they had to go find a guy because uh, maybe they didn't offer somebody who's a little bit more gettable. Yeah. I, I kind of liken it to driving down the highway, trying to find the cheapest, cheapest gallon of gas. And then eventually you just have to fill up your tank and you have to pay whatever's on the, on the sign. So, you know, they, they got themselves into a bind a few times having to take guys just to fill bodies in the class. And, you know, over time, some of those guys ended up leaving. Um, but, you know, I, I think this staff with getting out ahead of things, they're getting good, talented players that fit. I mean, last staff probably wouldn't have offered Jordan Anderson. This staff did. And it's, I, you know, scheme wise and philosophically he's a great fit they're putting him behind a big offensive line and you know, they're hoping to wrap that up with another big body or two on offensive line and it's it's clear that they're forming an identity last staff didn't offer hank Beatty, right and, and i i just like that that kid is exactly who you can get bring him in here he's going to produce right like he might not be the star might not fit every little box that you have but he wants to be at Illinois. He's a good player. And, you know, just talking with some guys, they're like, that's a really good get for Illinois. Like, you can build a foundation with those guys. Now you want to add more to it. And that's what this month is about. So to wrap up, Ryan, just how have you felt six months in without being able to host any visitors? Like, what's your takeaway so far about how this staff recruits, who they recruit, and how they just go about the process? Keep, I mean, keeping in mind that there is a bit of a honeymoon period and a grace period with the new staff, you know, considering that they haven't been able to meet with any of these guys in person at all, I think you have to call the first few months a success. Um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to give them too much of a leash because obviously they're going to have to sustain this. And once official visits come on, it's it's game on with all the other schools. But we are not raising the leading Big Ten West recruiting class yet. Just <laughs> No, no, and there's there's a lot of work still to do. Um, but you know, I, I think their approach is much more tailored to a college recruiting approach. Uh, you know, they, they understand the importance of recruiting the whole family. They build relationships with siblings, with parents, with coaches. You know, I think with Bielema taking those steps early on to really mend the relationship with the Illinois high school coaches, you're already seeing those dividends paying off. You know, again, they're not going to sweep the state but they've done a good job of getting the guys that they, at least right now they should be getting in the state. And I think if they have more success, they'll see higher rated guys that are interested in, in hopping on board, but, you know, all things considered, given the circumstances, you know, in the, in the country right now and in the recruiting landscape, I, th- I think they've done well. Um, the next two to three months will be very critical towards keeping that going. Um, but, you know, I, I think they've started to turn the corner. They've, that that college approach has helped them quite a bit. And, you know, I think if they're able to maintain that and maintain that level of effort and energy and keep the good vibes going, and especially if they can win some games this fall, I think it'll really, really help, help jumpstart their recruiting efforts over the next few years. Yeah. I mean, it remains to be seen how these evaluations will turn out, how this staff coaches and all of those things, but they have some credibility given how much power five experience and some successful power five experience at that. Um, But I'm a process guy when it comes to the effort, the organization, and then the full on staff, you know, all together working these is really impressive to me. Because what I hear from recruits and their parents is, man, Illinois is just their approach to this thing is they're all over us and they're they're, They want us to be there. And it's just their Zoom presentations are amazing. And um, I think that's encouraging because. Illinois has to do those things if they're going to win these kind of recruitments. And that's, that's what we have to see. I think in the next couple of months is how many power five recruiting battles can you win? You're not going to win all of them, but they're involved in a lot here. And if they can beat some of their big 10 West competitors, that hasn't happened very much the last couple of years. So if you can start doing that before you play games, I think that shows a really good recruiting approach and just a sell and how you identify and how you market yourself Uh, to these players and just the relationships you can build. So, so far I've been impressed with the process. I think it's helped them, you know, get some momentum, land some guys that they wouldn't have otherwise, but now it's time to show, okay, how do we compare to Nebraska? How do we compare to Northwestern, which they've lost a couple of Northwestern because Northwestern's really good with a really good. Yeah. Iowa, Um, those programs, Michigan state, like those are the battles you're in now. Can you win those? Because it's, it's been too often that, Hey, Purdue can come in here and just, 
take Dave Manat at the last second? Like, how, how does that happen? Like, it's not a huge recruitment, but it's like, that's a top 20 prospect who seemed to like Illinois, but Purdue recruited him harder and was able to close. Like, that's what we got to see this month. Yeah, and, and I think that that synergy that this staff has, there's an organized approach, there's a method to everything they do, there's a purpose to everything they do. And, I mean, we've, we've shouted them out time and time again, but Pat Embleton behind a lot of this stuff, putting this all together, they've hired the right staff with all the right pieces to do this. They're, they're not just trying to have some, some of their assistant coaches or just some random staff are handling responsibilities that are very important in the recruiting game. They've hired people that are specifically targeted to handle recruiting duties, to handle all the day to day, set up communications, have this approach and organize and script the approach. And it, it's, it's very clearly making a difference. And one of the biggest differences is the involvement of the head coach. Absolutely. The personal involvement of the head coach. It's, it's not that Brett talks with these guys every day, right? But like, he's the one who calls up, I'll just use this one, Jacob Bostic to offer him or Jordan Anderson to offer him. You know, he talks to these guys, you know, every couple of weeks, like he is involved in this process. And I think that is really, really important, especially when you get them on campus and you have a chance to close on them. I think that is really, really important to have, that involvement for your head coach because he's got to be the closer he's he's got to mm -hmm. be in most of these situations otherwise you know going up against the pj flex of the world it's really hard when when you got a disadvantage at the head coach well he, he's been present in a lot of these and a lot of the in-state guys that i talked to this spring have said that he stays involved in a lot of these group texts that they have with some of the Illinois assistant coaches. So, you know, he'll wake up in the morning, 6 a.m. He's texting, texting to recruit, hey, good luck, uh, you know, good luck with your game tonight, all that stuff. Like a lot of these guys, have, when I saw him play on Fridays and Saturdays, said they got a text that morning from Bielema saying good luck and wishing him good luck. So, you know, those are, those are some tangible steps they're taking that may seem, you know, it takes – 10 seconds to send that text, but to a lot of these guys, it means, it means something to them that the head coach is involved and cares and is, is personally recruiting them. And especially these in-state guys who are now seeing that Bielema is backing up what he promised to do with, you know, meaningful action. So I, I think that's huge for, for a lot of these guys. And it means that he's walking his talk. Big, big recruiting month for everybody, uh, but especially Illinois, they have all these prospects. I'm just happy for these prospects, man. They can get back to these campuses and get a look at, at some of their future options because, man, these last 14, 15 months have felt for them. I've understood it, but it's just it's nice for them uh, to get back here on the trail. Ryan Easterling, appreciate it, man. Time for us to fill up the coffee pot. June's going to be a crazy month, right? That's right. Thanks, Ryan. All right, thanks.